webinar series each day. Thrilled to have our president and CEO on the call today to introduce our speaker and share a little bit about our series with you. Betsy, welcome. Thank you, Amy. And I'm really looking forward to this topic because we've heard a lot of people really struggle with understanding what their roles and responsibilities are in the wake of an unprecedented economic crisis. So I think it's going to be a great topic today. Um, we would love for this to be a time for you to gain something from networking. So we hope you'll make the most of the chat box and let people know who you are and what you're doing. And so in this series, uh, we tried to pivot and understand the needs and anticipate the needs of our business community in a couple of different ways. Um, we hope that you've been made aware of this series through our communications tool that comes out in the format of a daily briefing once a day on email. And then in this uh, Securing Your Business series, we're trying to do a bit of a deeper dive with experts in our network who can help our members and our community understand some of the challenges and, and resources that are available to meet those. So we've had speakers ranging from this week, we had United States Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy. Um, we've had the Assistant County Attorney to go over Mayor Deming's stay at home order and local business owners with some ideas for how they pivoted their businesses. So our mission here at the Chamber is to convene people and ideas for the benefit of our businesses and our community. And we are thrilled to be able to still deliver on our mission promise as we're all work from home now. So um, I'm incredibly grateful to our team for coming up with the, the ways that we do this each and every day. And I wanna thank Tiffany and Amy who's, who are on this call to assist with anything that our participants may need help with. So our speaker today is Alex Mesdak, and he is with Mesdak Wallen Hamilton. He's the founding member of this real estate and business law firm based right here in Winter Park. He's been practicing law in Central Florida for more than 14 years, and his practice is focused in the area of transactional real estate, real estate finance, and business law. Alex represents international and Florida-based clients in connection with the acquisition, financing, development, and disposition of real property projects. Alex earned his JD from the University of Florida and holds a Master of Science in Business Administration uh, in, with a specialization in real estate from the University of Florida Warrington College of Business. There's a real go-gators pedigree here I'm glad to see. He also holds a bachelor's degree in international affairs from the Elliott School of International Affairs at George Washington University. He's a member of the Florida Bar and the District of Columbia Bar Association and serves on the board of directors for the French American Business Council of Orlando, the Central Florida Attorneys Real Estate Council. And Alex resides in Winter Park with his wife, Amanda, and their two children. Alex, welcome, and we're thrilled that you're here. Over to you. Oh, Betsy, thank you for, um, for the introduction. Um, thank you, Amy and, um, and Tiffany as well for the opportunity uh, to speak uh, on this webinar. I think you guys are doing a fantastic job of keeping the community connected and updated and informed in, in light of all that's, that's going on. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen. I was going over this with Amy and, and Tiffany. It's, it's, a, it's a slight, it's a PowerPoint presentation that's going to be sort of a, a roadmap for the talk and for the update on, uh, on landlord tenant relationships as we're uh, navigating this, uh, this COVID uh, period. Hold on. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the presentation. It's really uh, come to light in, 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 in light of all that's been happening on the, the small business side of things where with the orders that have, have come from the top down uh, requiring businesses to shut down. Most businesses do not own the real estate. A lot of businesses uh, rent uh, space, whether that's office, retail, uh, or industrial. Um, the focus in, in my experience and that I'll be speaking to really speaks more to um, office and retail. Um, so I'm going to share with you um, what I've seen on the side of the tenant, things to consider as a tenant, um, and also from the other side of it as the landlord and things to consider when um, working through a, the, the potential of providing relief to, to a tenant and, and light of the shutdown and, and the reduction in cash flow and, and, um, and the obligations that continue with the lease. 
And so and then at the end, we'll, we'll go through some, some workout considerations followed by some miscellaneous things. So um, starting off first with really um, tenant obligations, what, what kind of obligations are there on the lease? You know, first and, and foremost, really, it's, it's the, the obligation to pay rent. That's the, the cash stream that the uh, landlords really rely on um, to, to fund their operations, the maintenance of the building, and also to service the debt that they may have on, on the property. Most of the time, landlords do have a mortgage that they are responsible for paying. Um, Non-monetary obligations for a tenant include, I, I mean, uh, defaults also include non-monetary things, such as if, if a tenant abandons a space, uh, if they do fail to, to maintain certain um, obligations, such as keeping certain hours. You, know, you, um, in, you think of a, ma a mall situation or an open center, and situations like that, there may be rules in the center where all the tenants have to keep a uh, limited um, number of hours and, and has to stay open. Um, you know, how does that, how does the, uh, the orders that have come down requiring certain businesses to shut down affect the tenants? Um, also filing for bankruptcy and then um, judicial seizure of tenants' assets. One thing that, that tenant may want to consider and, and always, you know, go back to your lease first before going to the tenant, to the landlord, is um, what sort of notices are required from the tenant, from the landlord, before a tenant is deemed in in, uh, in default uh, of paying rent, and is also is there an opportunity to cure? You know, does the uh, is there a grace period in the lease, and then also before, and then also if 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 you're past the grace, is there an obligation on the landlord to uh, send the tenant a, a written notice for an opportunity to cure before the landlord can take any remedy uh, available under the lease? Uh, let's say um, let's say the tenant does fail to, to pay rent. What what sort of options does the landlord have? Well, um, they can the landlord can take back uh, terminate the lease, take back possession, um, and try to relet it. Florida doesn't offer self help, so unless the tenant turns in the keys, uh, the tenant the landlord will, will have to go through the court systems to, to take back possession. Um, another one, another option is to not terminate the lease, continue to keep uh, the tenant on the hook and make efforts to um, relet the space and mitigate damage and offset the uh, rent obligations uh, that are owed uh, by, by the tenant. And then another, uh, another remedy is for the landlord to not do anything and um, you know, with each breach for the, uh, the, the, the landlord can sue the tenant for, for damage. Um, as they fail to pay each month, and that's assuming that there's no acceleration of rent that's been exercised by the by the landlord. Alec, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I want to let you know from time to time we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. If you could stay a little closer to your microphone, I think it might help. Okay, certainly. All right. Okay, um, so you know, you're you're a tenant. You're having financial cash flow difficulties. Um, you know, you're, you're in April. Uh, April's coming up. You've been open uh, for part of March, but you haven't. Uh, but you had to shut down for the balance of the of the month. Um, you've got a couple options. Obviously, you can continue to pay rent uh, and comply with the lease. Um, you can withhold the rent and use that as uh, as leverage to negotiate with with the landlord or also pay rent, again, continue to comply with the lease and then seek to, to negotiate. Maybe there's goodwill there uh, showing the landlord that you're making efforts and but that going forward um, for pay from let's say May going forward, uh, it's gonna be a very, there's gonna be a hardship in making uh, the next month's rent um, to the extent that, that, that people know, that tenants know and they should by now. Um, the administration has put out a, an, an act, the Congress passed an act called the CARES Act that does provide um, funds for small businesses to uh, essentially to apply towards uh, their payroll to keep their employees. And part of that money also is uh, to be applied toward, can be applied towards rent, um, interest on, on debt obligations of the business and utilities. And if they're used for those things, they will, they will be forgiven. The, the borrower can, the tenant, and apply for forgiveness. Um, in terms of the tenant, you know, getting to know your lease, go back to your lease, there are certain provisions that may protect uh, you and give you some relief and leverage to, uh, to, to withhold rent. 
So one of those uh, provisions, uh, depending on your lease and as, as it's written, is a force measure provision. And that's pretty much a uh, force measure as an event that really makes the, that frustrates the purpose of the lease where um, parties can't carry out their intent, whether um, that's a shutdown of, of a building or a type of business. Uh, there'll be a provision that will, um, that, will that will essentially toll the obligations of the party. So as it applies in let's say, a, a lease situation, if there's a deadline for, for example, a landlord to deliver um, a space to a tenant, the, that, that deadline uh, may be told, and so the landlord does not have to meet that deadline because it wouldn't be possible. Maybe they, they can't get construction crews to go out and do the build out. Um, on the opposite side, the tenant may have an obligation to be open for business within a certain period of time. And in that circumstance, under this, that circumstance, they may not be able to as well because while they may have taken delivery of possession, um, they can't carry out their build out because the, the, the premises may be closed. So um, that's, that's one beneficial use for the force measure. Uh, clause the clause may also have a suspension of rent uh, obligations. That, and so that could, you know, that there's an argument to be made that um, the, the virus could be deemed a, an act of God. It's something that's unexpected. It's unavoidable. Um, and so um, if, 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 if read that way, then, uh, and, the, and the provision is, is written such that rent is suspended, then the, the, the tenant can be off the hook until the, the event passes. Also, interesting enough, sometimes these are written where if the force measure uh, event goes on for an extended period of time, that leaves either party the right to terminate the lease. Um, so that may be another way out for a tenant to, uh, to get out of a lease. Um, again, just go back. Each force measure clause is, is written separately, you know, differently. So uh, go back to your lease. I would recommend to do that and, and study that provision. Other things to consider, lease term. Um, how much time is left on your lease? You know, are you, is there one or two months left? Uh, maybe you just you know, push through as your business may be closed um, and pay rent to, to go through the, the rest of uh, the lease and, and then walk away. Uh, maybe you can't with cash flow. There's such a hardship that there's no cash flow for it. So it's a matter of going to the landlord and trying to negotiate maybe uh, a discounted buyout of, of, or the discounted payoff of the balance that's due. Also, um, consider maybe a provision in your lease where you've, you know, you're exercising an option to renew, and the renewal is maybe based on um, market rent. So this renewal will be. You know, you've got a couple of months now, or maybe it's down at the end of the year, you've got to renew your lease and there's gonna be a fair market value assumption on, on the rent. And, you know, it's right now it seems that um, rental rates are, are still where they were, but um, who knows where they go, uh, where they are six months from now. And so it may be, uh, may be favorable at that time to, uh, to, to stay in the lease, restructure it until you get to uh, that, uh, that, that, that extension of renewal and renegotiation of the rental rate. Okay. Um, again, going back to still going to the lease, looking at the lease, um, no monetary uh, obligation by the tenants. We're talking about the continuous operation. Uh, is the tenant required to remain open during certain business hours? So um, maybe you and you can't. It's uh, going back to the landlord and getting a waiver on that requirement um, would be uh, recommended. Um, some, some leases are personally guaranteed, so the lease is in the name of the business, but the landlord uh, has required that uh, the individual, the principal or principals, maybe there are multiple principals involved, personally guarantee the lease. Uh, these can be full recourse, so the landlord has the ability to look uh, to, the, to the guarantor, uh, even without looking towards the, uh, to the, to the tenant to, for the satisfaction of rental obligations under the lease. Um, maybe those guarantees were, were negotiated down so that maybe, you know, go back and look at your guarantee because perhaps that guarantee has peeled off. Maybe it was for uh, a, re, uh, a lesser amount than the term of the lease. Maybe the obligation under the guarantee is limited to uh, a fixed amount or perhaps a, uh, uh, a rolling period of maybe six months or 12 months at most. Consider your landlord as well. Um, maybe uh, some landlords may have more flexibility than others. Uh, national REITs, um, may, uh, although maybe more capitalized, better well capitalized than 
and have to be lower leveraged um, may not be able to may have their hands uh, uh, you know tied to it because of their, of their shareholders um, or at the same time maybe they're in a position to show more uh, leniency and flexibility than somebody else in a mom and pop or a local landlord who's got um, who's who's uh, who's whose property is encumbered. Um, really, so find out who you're, get to know your, your landlord is, is really uh, an important thing to do and communicate with them. So um, now on the side of the, the landlord, so you've been approached, you're by the tenant, the tenant's asking for relief and you're considering working with them um, from as a practical thing and so you legally bound by something you you you, you, have, you don't intend to be either don't put everything in writing and keep the conversations um, over the phone or if you are going to put something in writing to avoid them being construed as binding on you uh, maybe it's a uh, in the subject line you, you you put something to the effect of you know, for negotiation purposes only um you know when you evaluate a, a, a tenant for that's asking for rent relief consider evaluating their financials. There's already, maybe there's already a financial reporting obligation in the lease, so you've seen them. Um, but if you haven't, and, and you have that right to order it, uh, to, to request it, uh, or even if it's not in your lease, it's spelled out as a condition to considering this, maybe um, you, you get the balance, the prof, uh, profit and loss for the year to date and last year, see where that business is and is it in its business. Was it already struggling pre-virus? Uh, or, or is the request now just strictly a, a function of um, the toll that the virus has taken on, on the tenant's business. It's um, things you'll want to consider because maybe this is a business that was, was on, on its way out to begin with, uh, even before um, COVID-19. Uh, and so maybe um, trying to work through and maintain that, that, that tenant may not be ideal and maybe it's better to go back to the marketplace. Although maybe the marketplace isn't ready for any tenants. Deals aren't happening for the time and for the, the foreseeable future. Um, very important, and, and before committing to anything, check your loan documents. Most landlords do have loans, uh, so and most loans have uh, certain restrictions and covenants that are binding on the landlord when it comes to them uh, trying to re renegotiating or entering into uh, new leases. They generally require some sort of lender approval. Perhaps there's a threshold, so if it's a lease that's a uh, less than 2,000 or 3,000 square feet, uh, there's no landlord requirement, there's no lender requirement for a new lease or any amendments, uh, but perhaps anything over does so require uh, lender approval. So um, after you've done those things, you want, you'll, you'll want to consider you know, reducing anything in writing to an amendment. Um, you know, I would strongly encourage that um, each relief uh, relief given to each tenant be done on a case-by-case -case basis. So to keep uh, tenants from sharing what they're receiving um, as a deterrent, always difficult to enforce, but as a deterrent, you put a confidentiality provision in your amendments um, as a condition to maybe the release. Perhaps there was maybe yearly uh, reporting requirements. Now maybe you increase that to quarterly reporting requirements or you just make it so that the requirements are at any time the, the landlord uh, request so with, with reasonable notice. Um, maybe ask for an increased security deposit or guarantees to the extent that uh, there is liquidity there. Then maybe uh, you take a second month uh, of, of security deposit or you bring on maybe an additional guarantor by way of either another principal or maybe there's another a business uh, that has uh, financials that, that that's, uh, seem solid. And then also, uh, as a condition to any sort of relief, maybe uh, that, that tenant had a right of first refusal over any lease space that would go up for lease uh, in the building, or they have an a right to expand into um, another space. And so maybe you know, that's if the, if the landlord doesn't feel so confident that, that they want that tenant to be to have those rights and, and expand further in the building, then maybe those, are, those get removed. Again, this is on the landlord side. Consider um, you know, getting the uh, and then having the the tenant waive any 
sort of um, provisions that could be ambiguous, that could be construed as uh, limiting the land or the, the tenant's obligations for rent or, mon or uh, non-monetary obligations. And so you get explicit waivers for things like the force measure, the frustration of purpose, the possibility. Maybe you get them also that confirm to com that they're going to comply with any CDC guidelines or recommendations. Uh, these are hedges and protections for the landlord uh, in case of in case there may be some liability. Um, if there is a, a force measure clause in the lease, maybe have it rewritten so that um, it clarifies that it does not cover things such as um, uh, viruses and pandemics. Um, you know, another one also is just to confirm that get an estoppel from the landlord that confirming that the landlord is not in default under the lease and uh, the tenant agreeing to indemnify the landlord for any sort of liability that could arise for the COVID uh, regarding the premises. So premises liability. Um, and then also maybe that the tenant pursues any sort of uh, insurance claims that they may have related to COVID. Um, you know, there may be coverage for uh, interruption under the leases. Um, I mean, under the, the insurance policies, although there could be maybe exclusions as for um, claims based on viruses and pandemics. Um, and then one of the big things, and, and we've seen this, where it's um, had have, have the tenant apply for financial uh, relief programs that have been made available through the, through the CARES Act. Um, you know, if a, if a landlord, if a tenant's going to come to you and ask for relief, and ask you to help them as a landlord. Well, maybe you know it. It should be. It would behoove them to also help have them help themselves. And um, and one way to do that is maybe is to condition the, the relief to uh, on on them applying for the CARES Act, provide providing proof of that as a condition. So um, on the decision side, you know there comes a point where <clears throat> the tenants kind of decide whether uh, their business. Is, is, it, is it worth for them to, to keep their business and, and try to work through this um, and ride out the storm in, in hopes that uh, there are better times and their, their, their business will be able to bounce back? Or um, does it make more sense to try to close business now? On the side of the landlord, it's, it's really a function of, um, you know, they're trying to keep uh, the income stream as, as uh, unaffected as, as possible. Um, do you or you know, try to work things out with this tenant and ride the storm out with them you know, with the hopes that they have the financial wherewithal and um, that they can recover once things bounce back uh, or um, and, and that therefore make concessions or do you, do you just enforce the lease straight and, and not reach any sort of concessions with the, law, with the possibility of losing that tenant and then going back to the marketplace and, and backfilling the space? A couple options that we've seen, uh, a couple options in terms of what's being done on rent. Um, we've seen it where landlords, tenants will come in and ask for a rent reduction that can be um, on a temporary basis. Maybe it's 30 days, 60 or 90 days with the possibility of extending that. Um, the rent is abated, maybe it's half the rent with the, uh, the balance of the half being paid either a lump sum, lump sum. Um, on the on the back end of the lease or maybe at the end of the year or maybe it's amortized over the remainder of the months for that for the entire term or maybe just for the year um yeah this um the rent deferral is just again just deferring the rent maybe it's deferral of rent altogether that gets paid on the, on the back end um and, and is repaid this is the other one on the redemption is you could reduce the rent and just essentially forgive part of it. Uh, I've seen various things. You know, I've seen um, some landlord, we have one landlord um, who gave a, uh, a tenant um, April, a free ride for April uh, rent. And so there were two tenants, two tenant building, and the um, <clears throat> complete forgiveness of the rent. Um, I've seen one landlord give, um, it was a request by the tenant where it was a fast casual concept and the tenant asked for their lease to be converted to percentage rent, uh, where the tenant would pay the landlord 10% of uh, their uh, gross revenue. That wasn't accepted. Instead, the, 
what the landlord was agreeable to was to reduce the rent by $1,500 for the remainder of the year forgiven through, uh, so through December 31st. Uh, as a condition, the, the tenant had to bring their rent current through March and with the rent uh, reduction applying uh, for April through the end of the year. Uh, another one uh, that we've seen as well is, it's, uh, you know, the landlord will accept maybe April or May rent if, if April is already paid, um, the security deposit in lieu of rent, and then maybe negotiate a replenishment of the security deposit at a later point in time. At the end of the day, I think um, whatever the agreement that's reached, you want to put it in writing. You want to put it, it'll be in the form or put it in the form of an amendment to any existing lease. Um, have your lease, uh, have the amendment reviewed. I would recommend it be reviewed by, by an attorney. Make sure it's got the correct verbiage that it uh, carries out the intention of the parties. Um, be signed and that it's it's enforceable. Um, lastly, um, and if this is regarding a, um, uh, the orders that have been passed recently by the, by the governor um, involving foreclosure actions and um, evictions. And so um, we get the, the order that came out on April 2nd and that said that, that, that um, all mortgage foreclosure actions um, will be suspended and told for 45 days and that um, all evictions uh, for residential evictions will, will be told also for 45 days. The uh, Ninth Circuit came out with its own um, order and ordered that all the foreclosure cases be canceled, um, that all actions related to foreclosures be suspended and that all uh, residential evictions be suspended as well through, um, through May 19th. So um, at the end of the day, as a tenant, you would want to just know your lease, find out what the, the uh, when a default occurred, what could trigger a default, what sort of notice periods uh, there are, if any, what sort of cure periods you may have. Um, engage the landlord as soon as possible, evaluate your business, how much time is left in your, in your lease, um, see what financial options are out there, they're out there and, um, you know, this, this program, this CARES Act is really, it's aimed at, um, at, at helping small businesses um, stay liquid so that they have um, during this downturn and so that they can continue to meet payroll and, and pay things like their rent. On the landlord side, consider just uh, evaluating each request for relief um, individually, uh, request financials, um, have the tenant help themselves apply for CARES Act program, review your, your loan documents, um, and interact with your, your lenders and, um, and, and the tenant. So uh, hopefully all of this is short-lived. It's going to be painful. Um, it is painful, um, but we'll, you know, we've got to work through this together and, and, and collaborate to, to get through it so that um, you know, we can thrive when, when things bounce back. Um, this is, that's the end of my talk. If, um, Amy, if, I, if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Sure. Thank you so much, Alex. And for those on the call, this is the time where you have the opportunity to ask your questions. And we can do so in a couple of ways. Um, the first choice would be that you use the Zoom raise hand feature. And that will allow me to unmute you and you can go ahead and ask your poll question to Alex. Um, to find the raise hand button, you go to the bottom of your screen, hover there if you're on your computer and a banner will appear. It will have different icons such as your mute and your go off video but button and one of them is just simply a raise hand. Um, so if you go ahead and raise your hand, I'd be happy to unmute you to ask your question. Um, in addition, if needed, some people I know are not able to use their microphones from time to time, you are welcome to type your question in the chat box and I'll read it out for you. To begin, we did have a question from Amber um, in the Q&A box. Amber, I'd like to try to unmute you if you're willing to ask your question live. 
I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk. And if you unmute yourself on your end, you're welcome to ask your question. Hi. You're good to go. Um, I have a, a question in particular for, um, I have five different commercial landlords. And each one of them has offered me different um, relief. And uh, the one that I find to be the most difficult is one locally um, in your area. So I was interested if you'd heard anything that um, would uh, be similar to this. They have required a, a ton of, of documentation, uh, such as three years of my tax returns, uh, bank statements. Um, I finally got them everything they needed and we were able to just start discussing how I would repay them if I were to be given um, two months of relief and then paying them after those two months. Um, once we discussed that and we agreed to our terms, they said they would also require that I give them my sales tax reports. And I had no problem with that. Um, but then the caveat was is that they wanted those sales tax reports for the rest of my lease. And I felt that that was over and above what I should have to provide them based on, on my ten, tenure there and uh, payment history. And I was, cons I was curious to see if you felt that was an enforceable thing uh, for them to require. And, uh, and is that something that is out there now that the people are doing? And none of my other landlords have requested that. Yeah, that's interesting, and, you, and you've been there for 10 years. Um, you know, it really, th that reporting requirements on the sales, um, it's enforceable if the parties agree to it and, and, and reduce it to writing as an amendment to the lease. Um, if, if that's not complied with at a later point in time, then that would be a, uh, that would be a breach of, of the lease. Um, you know, maybe, you know, there's, I mean, there's different ways to handle that. I've, I, I can't say I've seen that requirement per se as a condition to for rent relief. Um, I don't know how much, maybe that's something that's, you can negotiate where it applies for just a certain, for a period of time under the lease as opposed to the balance of the lease. Um, okay. I was just, I think every, every, everything's on the table right now. Yeah. I was just curious. The landlord. They can pretty much something. request. That, that was starting to become a, a, a thing. And also, I, I also wondered, you know, if I simply stopped sending them my, sac my sales taxes, is, is, am I going to be uh, evicted? <laughs> what is my, what, is, what are the options there at that, at that point? Well, that, that would be a, a non-monetary breach, but it would be a breach nonetheless. And um, it would, it would, it would, it would be in the lease as to what the remedies are for that. And um, maybe there's a, there's a cure period in, in there for allowing after the notice from the, from a notice from a, from the landlord to you um, to cure that. And if not, they could, they could technically yeah, evict you. Okay. Well, um, okay. I thank you for the uh, opportunity to ask the question. My pleasure. Good luck. Thank you so much, Amber, for asking your question. Um, we do have one more hand raised. Lorenzo, um, I have unmuted you, and you can unmute your computer or phone and speak now. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? Hi, Lorenzo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry I crashed your meeting. I'm from Celebration, but I'm also in the Chamber of Commerce over here from Kissimmee. But uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of what is going on in our town, sadly, a celebration with construction and residents suing our landlord for not keeping the, the building itself, the structural supports and everything for our building. So fortunately, um, before any of this happened with the virus, um, my business was interrupted because of construction. The, my landlord never communicated with us, so they blocked my whole building and started putting sticks to hold balconies and fixing the, the premises. So that put us pretty much out of business since January. And now with this, um, that it happening, of course, we're not making any money and we're close. But my lease ends in August and Orlando is very, making it very difficult for us to renew. 
So is there a way that you could help me out to understand how I can approach to make a renewal from this situation? Because I have a very big investment over there and it's not very easy for me to move somewhere else. So um, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know the, the law. I don't know if my landlord is by law had to let me know about construction before it happens. And now with this, they're forcing us, of course, to be paying rent. And we have done it so far, but um, they're not making anything towards a renewal. So, so you don't have a renewal option in your lease? It, yes, your lease. we do. We have to notify the landlord six months prior. And it always happens to me. We have been there in business for 11 years. And every time my lease is up, they play this game. I think it's like the landlord game of, of keeping the tenants um, in there by letting them know they're not going to renew. And then suddenly they magically renew your lease. But they let us know always at the last minute. So for me, I don't know if the same term of six months prior to notify the landlord applies to me the other way around, that the landlord has six months to let me know if they're going to do a lease or not. But they're not communicating at all about it. Usually these option renewals are written such that it's the tenant that has to give notice of its intent to renew six months ahead of the expiration of the, event of the existing term. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then they waive that right. Um, so it really depends on how you know, your lease, your renewal option is written. Is it your option or is it the landlord's option? It's ours, yes. We have okay. to let them know. Uh -huh. so then I, you know, if you did that back in February, if, if your lease ended in, ends in, in August. Well, we did it since last year. We've been trying since November last year. We trying to negotiate because we try to keep it a little bit longer than that. And the last time we communicated was in, we did January, February, and March. We have done send the same emails but sadly our landlord not doesn't how, how would i say this they, they don't they're playing right now they're, they're getting sued by the city of celebration because of not complying with the building codes so they're not communicating with us at all so it worries us because they have threatened to condemn the whole building the county and the landlord is not renewing anything we're not saying anything. those are those are different issues in terms of yeah. what are the landlord requirements and obligations under the lease in terms of maintaining maintaining the the structural integrity of the building um, and the exterior and being compliant with applicable codes. Um, there may be that, that's all going to be based in, in what's how the, the lease is written and if in fact there are those obligations. Mm -hmm. You know, towards a renewal, what can you do? like. Is there a way that, like, because we're dealing with a person that is like the property manager. The owner is based in New York City. So it's very hard for us because this person like to play games with us as, as tenants. Like they're not mm -hmm. honest with us. They are always giving us, ignoring our messages and they play that they we never send anything. So how can you, um, I don't know, if there's a way for us to, to get on a, like to get the lease extended or something or it has to be up to them like there's no law or something that can protect us towards that i think it's really going to come down to the language of the lease and um it's, I'm, I'm sorry to say this but it's kind of difficult to answer that just in general without having that yeah without, without having looked at it or if, if, i understand <laughs> thank you jess this is very frustrating and i have a question those do you know if the law here in florida requires the landlord to give you previous notice before doing any construction in the premises or they can just do go ahead and do whatever they want grab your property take it away store it somewhere else without your knowledge like is that something that happens <laughs> everywhere because i i don't know i i mean like we have patio furniture that is always taken by my landlord and placed somewhere else and there's so i don't know if there's something that can I don't know if the law protects us that they have to notify us 48 hours before, 24 hours with construction. Yeah, I, think that, I think that's going to be more least specific, least specific in the language that, that's in there. Um, okay. yeah, I, Thank you. So it's pretty much like it. going back to the lease and just reading it carefully and look what it says. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to me if you'd like me to take a look at it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you, Lorenzo, for your question. And I will say we're glad to have you here, even though you are in celebration, we're glad to be a resource to you. Um, so at this time, we don't have any further questions. Thank you for answering those, Alex. I'll turn it back over to Betsy to close us out. Alex, you can see the need Thank for this, types of, this type of information. So we're really grateful that you've been able to spend time with our membership today. Alex is very engaged in the community and a great resource. So if you've got further questions, we recommend that you follow up with him because he's a trusted and reliable uh, collaborator on these issues in our community. We wanted to let you know what's coming up. So this is our last webinar of the week. On Monday, we're actually gonna be taking our tone a little bit lighter. Um, and we have a wonderful resource in the community. Uh, her name is Chelsea Highland. She's the director of the Annie Russell Theater and the SAC Comedy Lab, uh, and at the SAC Comedy Lab. And she's gonna be giving us um, permission to play lessons for a pandemic from improv comedy. So many of you know that improv comedy gives you permission to say yes, and it is a way to, um, enable innovative thinking and collaborative problem solving. So we hope that that's a valuable webinar for you to attend on Monday. Uh, that's going to be at four o'clock. We'd love for you to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And if you're not subscribing to our newsletter and our website, please pop on to winterpark.org, pop in your email address, and we'll make sure that you're on our newsletters where we're putting up to date information about how to navigate through uh, the pandemic at this time. So we have key connect groups launching next week. Um, and this is your chance to network, exchange ideas, dis discuss challenges, and let you know how you're adapting your business during this difficult time. The groups will be forming soon. If you want to be part of a group, email Lauren Bloom at lbloom at winterpark.org. That's L-B-L-O-O-M at winterpark.org. And Lauren will be your guide to our Key Connect group. So we really appreciate you all spending time with us today. Thanks again to Alex and thank you to our team uh, for connecting this content with our community. We hope that as we move into the weekend, you will find ways to rest and support yourself through a very difficult time. And thank you again for being with us today. Many thanks again to Alex. Thank you, Betsy and Amy and Tiffany and everybody participating. Thanks, Alex. Have a great night, Bye. everyone. Bye. Thank you, Amy. You too. Thank you, Tiffany. Bye, guys.